Hello again! Um, I'd like to do a video on uh, Doppler shift and a particular application that we can uh, find it in, or we might find it in with uh, satellites. Uh, I was reminded of this uh, today, when, or this morning, when I was talking to somebody on the phone about satellite stuff. I thought I might go over it, because it's kind of interesting. Uh, also, it uh, people might be confused by Doppler shift sometimes and think it's like some crazy complex thing. It's really not. It's kind of easy. Uh, there's a lot of things that depend on this. For example, uh, if you you have a uh, if you ever pull over by a road pirate uh, for speeding, well, they probably figured out you were speeding because they caught you with radar, which depends on this Doppler shift. So let's uh, get right into it. So what is Doppler shift? Well, suppose we have a an antenna, like your Wi-Fi antenna or a uh, radio antenna for the radio station, all right? Let's just say it's symbolized by this little weird looking ball with a, uh, on top of a pyramid thing. And let's say that these, this, uh, these semicircles here uh, symbolize the radio energy that is coming out of this antenna. As you can see, it's coming out in all directions, okay? And uh, the space in between each of these lines is all, all the same between each of them, all right? Now, if we were to take this, and if you see this, this uh, dotted line I'm drawing here, if we were to take this, and again, uh, I, should, I should say that uh, the instructional model that we're going to use is not necessarily how things work. It's, it's, it's accurate enough uh, to get the point across, okay? So this is kind of where we get into this weirdness. Let's just assume that this is viewing the antenna from the side, okay? If we were to go and cut a cross section through these radio waves, uh, we might see that they look something like this. Okay, again, this is uh, not exactly accurate, but it's what we're going to use here. You see that there's um, a a, uh, a distance between the, the peaks of each of, the, of, the, of these and the troughs, okay, and they're all equal, all right? Now, if we were to go through this and, and look at this, this pattern on all, all around the antenna, we would find that it's all equal because this antenna is stationary, okay? This is all equal here, all right? This is side view. Um, now, one thing we're going to make use of here uh, throughout this this video is the speed of light, uh, otherwise known as C, little c, uh, and that is about equal uh, 300,000, or uh, uh, yes, 300,000 kilometers per second. I, I was using 3 million all through this, so, but, but that's meters a second. So 300,000 kilometers a second. So this wave, or these waves here, are radiating through space and the atmosphere and everything at a speed or velocity of 300,000 kilometers per second, okay? Now, this is, like I said, this is for a stationary antenna, okay? Now, keep in mind, the spacing be between these peaks and troughs is, is whatever it is, but it's all equal around the antenna, all right? Because it's stationary. Now, assume that this antenna starts moving, okay? And it's moving in the direction that I have put up here this way, all right? Now what's going to happen is that even though light is ridiculously fast, okay, the speed of light is and thus radio waves are, is ridiculously fast, because there's a movement in that antenna, these uh, waves on this side of the antenna, okay, where it's moving, the, the waves in the direction on the, the side that it's moving, they're going to basically become compressed, and this is a physical phenomenon, okay? The, the waves themselves are becoming compressed, but the movement is causing it to seem like they're becoming compressed. Uh, you see what I'm saying here? Um, well, actually, they would be... They would be compressed because of the movement, not because of the wave itself, okay? It's a, like I said, it's a physical phenomenon, not an, not an electromagnetic one, all right? So on this side, as you see here, these have become compressed. They're, the distance between these has become shorter, these peaks and troughs, okay? It's, 
It's decreased, all right? Now this wave is still propagating through space that way, because this is going this way, at the speed of light, all right? Now if we come over here and look at the opposite side, okay, we'll see that down here on B, the wave has become uh, expanded, okay? It's been drawn out, all right? And we see that here, okay? We see that the distance between these peaks is greater than uh, the distance between these and the same thing with the troughs. And likewise with, with, with this thing here. Uh, we see that these peaks, if I've drawn them correctly, and kind of correct, because this is in motion and this one is stationary, these are more compressed than these. Okay, and likewise these are uh, have a longer wavelength than these over here. Okay, now this one also, this wave also is moving this way. Uh, again, not completely accurate to how things work, but it's the instructional model. So this wave here is moving this way at the speed of light. So everything here, this and this are going at the speed of light. All right. So that's it for the basic, the basics of the Doppler shift itself. All right. Now what I'd like to do, as you see on the board here, there's a bunch of nonsense. I'd like to go over that and, and uh, show how we can use it and how we can calculate certain things uh, with it. So how can we calculate the amount of shift that's going to happen here, all right? We see that this has become compressed, like, like we said, and this has become expanded down here relative to the, uh, the original wave uh, uh, right here, the original wave form, okay? How can we calculate this? How can we calculate how much, uh, like I said, the compression is going to be here and the expansion is going to be there, okay? Well, let's assume that these have, uh, this is transmitting with a frequency of 3 megahertz, it's 3 million cycles a second. What that means is from this point of reference here on the wave to this one right here, all this area, that is going to happen 3, 000, or, uh, 3 million times every second. Okay, so we have one here, two here, three, all the way down to 3 million every second, all right? And of course, this would be the same too. It's three, 3 million every second. Well, the, uh, I should say, uh, coming out of here, the original uh, waveform coming out of here being transmitted is three, 3 million times a second, or 3 megahertz, all right? So that would probably be this one here. Let's, let's see that. That's that. This is 3 megahertz. The original stationary signal is 3 megahertz. So what this thing is transmitting is 3 megahertz, all right? So we've got that down here, 3 megahertz, okay? Uh, let's assign a velocity to this, and we're going to make it pretty quickly just to make the, the math very evident, okay, and make things line up nicely and calculate out easily. So we'll assign a velocity to this transmitter of, in this direction of 75,000 kilometers per second. So that's pretty darn quick. That's a good, that is a good fraction of the speed of light there, okay? So, uh, how can we calculate the wavelength? Now, the wavelength is from here, from this point to this point. It's called the wavelength, okay? Because we need to know the wavelength uh, to figure out the frequency shift, all right? The Doppler shift, okay? Now, the wavelength of, of a wave is the speed of light divided by the frequency, okay? And we see here, if we calculate that out, we'll get 3,000 up 300 million meters per second divided by 3 million hertz, okay, 3 million cycles per second. And the seconds cancel out, we divide that out, and we get 100 meters. So from here to here is 100 meters. Well, I keep using this example. This is a bad example. Uh, from on this wave, on the stationary wave, uh, the, or I should say the antenna is stationary. From here to here, that's 100 meters, all right? And then from here to here, that's another 100 meters. Here to here is another 100 meters, and you get the point, okay? So this is for our, like I said, for our stationary antenna, okay? Now, how are we going to figure this out for a moving antenna? Well, what we can do is we can, we've got velocities here, okay? We've got light is a velocity. The speed of light here is the velocity. Not light is not a velocity, light has a velocity. Well, yes. Uh, we have 
we have lights, the, the speed of light here, okay, in meters per second, and we have the, the speed of the antenna moving through space here at kilometers per second, but we'll convert it to meters per second. So what we can do is if we fiddle around with this, this equation here, and we add in the velocity of this antenna, what we can do is, or what we can see is uh, the wavelength of A, which is this one up here, this is A, okay, the wavelength of this one is the, the uh, speed of light minus the uh, antenna's velocity over the frequency, okay? And the reason it's subtracted is it's a simple uh, logical deduction, I guess you could say, is that uh, if we want to decrease, if we want to make this smaller, we're going to have to subtract something, okay? So we're going to subtract this. If we want to make this larger, what we're going to do is we're going to add something, and so we're going to add this. But for this particular case, we're going to subtract it. All right. So to get the wavelength of this, we're going to come down here and we're going to take the speed of light, which we will become very acquainted with during this. Okay. And we'll subtract the uh, velocity of this antenna or the speed of the antenna, whatever you want to call it. Velocity and speed technically aren't the same thing, but whatever. For this example, it's fine. Uh, and, you know, got to remember to convert this to meters per second. This is kilometers a second up here, so convert to meters per second. There we go. And divide that by the frequency. Remember to convert that as well. It's not 3 megahertz, so we're going to use, we're going to uh, convert it to hertz down here, which we've done. And if we divide that, or multiply that, uh, sorry, uh, subtract this, uh, we'll get uh, this number here, 225 million meters per second and divide that by 3 million hertz, and we'll get a wavelength of 75 meters. So that means that from this point on this waveform to this point on this waveform is 75 meters. And from this point to this point is 75 meters, and from this point to this point is 75 meters. All right? Now, that goes along with our hypothesis that the wavelength on this side should be shorter than the original wavelength. And we see that here. The original wavelength is 100 meters, and the wavelength we have here is 75 meters. All right? So let's do the one on this side, OK? If we are, I should add, well, I'm not going to add that. But on this side, what we'll have is, uh, like I said before, we'll, we'll be adding this velocity here, OK? We'll be adding to that to the speed of light. And this is B, not in pink. So if we go through that whole thing, what we'll have is uh, 300 million, which is the speed of light, uh, meters a second, uh, time, or uh, uh, with, uh, uh, what is that, 75 million? Yeah, 75 million uh, meters per second added to that. And we're going to divide all that by 3, me uh, three million hertz. I almost said 3 megahertz. <laughs> And then if we do that, or when we do that, uh, we'll get 375 million meters per second divided by 3, uh, 3 million hertz. And then we'll get 125 meters for that wavelength, which, again, that fits our hypothesis that on this side the wavelengths are longer. Okay, So that means that from this point to this point is 125 meters, from this point to this point is 125 meters, and from this point to this point is 125 meters. Okay. So, we've got our wavelengths here. Can we convert these back into a frequency? All right, so if I'm over here and I'm looking at this antenna and I'm receiving uh, a radio signal from it, what frequency am I going to, am, am I as the observer going to see this frequency coming in? What is it going to look like to me? Because I'm stationary. So I'm gonna be a stationary observer here on this side, okay? And to figure that out, I use this wavelength, the 75 meters, because it's A, it's on this side, okay, it's coming straight at me. Uh, so if we screw around with this up here, what we'll get is uh, the frequency of A, okay, that, I'm, that I see it as, is going to be the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So let's do that. 300 million meters per second divided by 75 meters for the wavelength. The meters cancel out. Uh, and we'll get the cycles per second here. So I get 4 megahertz, okay? 4 million cycles per second. So we see the shorter wavelength is going to give us a higher frequency, all right? 
And we see that here. Is there's more repetitions here in the same period of time than there is here in the same period of time. Okay? So it's going to give us higher frequency. Now, if we do that for uh, waveform B, uh, if I'm over here and it's moving away from me, this antenna is moving away from me, what, as the observer, am I going to be seeing that frequency uh, being transmitted as? Well, 300 million meters per second divided by 125 meters, so meters cancel out, we're doing, using uh, megahertz here, or uh, we're going for uh, uh, repetitions over time. Uh, so that will come out to be 2.4 megahertz. So if I'm over here, and I'm looking at this antenna, it's going to appear to me, because it's moving away, to, away from me, that the frequency that this is transmitting is 2.4 megahertz. So you see there's quite a spread there. I mean, there's a, a little bit of a spread here. Well, actually, there's quite a spread there. There's a 50, uh, 50 meter spread there. And there's a uh, oh, 1.6 megahertz spread here. Okay, so that's quite a, bit, a spread. Okay. Uh, so, I'm going to uh, stop the camera and uh, reset, and then we'll continue on. So, for most applications that we'll come across uh, every day in, in uh, normal life, knowing the wavelength and the frequency shift, you know, the wavelength change and the frequency shift is not going to really be much of a point for us. But what we can do, as I mentioned before, is if you've, which I'm sure many of you have, if you've ever been pulled over by a road pirate when you're not minding your own business, uh, and you've been told that you were speeding, how does that road pirate figure out if you were speeding? Well, if we take this uh, over here and we massage it a little bit, this, this uh, 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 formula here, little equation, uh, we can come out and we can get this, all right? So what, what we're figuring out here is the velocity. That's what we want to know, okay? The, how fast something is moving, okay? And how we get that, the velocity is equal to the frequency of the transmitter, okay, <clears throat> that we're putting out, the, the frequency that we're putting out, multiplied by the speed of light, all right? And then we'll divide that by the frequency that we're getting back because uh, it's radar, all right? And then we'll subtract the speed of light, okay, from that all, uh, from the Okay. So basically what's happening here is uh, we've got a radar gun, for example, and it's sending out a known frequency, okay, it's, it's known, all right, it's sending that out, and some of that radar energy, that radio wave, some of these radio waves that are coming out, uh, that it's sending out, are being reflected back to the radar gun, to the receiver in there, okay? And when it does that, it's going to measure the frequency that those radio waves are, 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 are received at, okay? Um, so basically what we're doing is, is, is we're sending out, in, in, like in this example, okay, we would be sending out uh, 3 megahertz, okay? That's our known frequency. And then we would be receiving, for example, if it's moving toward us at this speed, okay, we would be receiving back from it, this is the unknown frequency, and, and we're getting it back, uh, we'd be receiving 4 megahertz, all right? Uh, if we, we send out that 3 megahertz and it's moving away from us, when we get that, the, the, that uh, radio energy back, it's going to be at 2.4 megahertz, again, if it's moving it away from us at 75,000 uh, kilometers per second, okay? So that's kind of what we're doing over here, all right? So for this, as you can probably tell, when, when, uh, you, if you want to get really accurate with these things or measure small velocities and, or small distances and things, you kind of have to go up in frequency and it's probably the easiest thing to do uh, to, uh, rather than you know, build more expensive equipment and stuff that's more accurate um, as far as certain things go. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put out a frequency of 10 gigahertz, which is 10 billion cycles per second. All right, it's much higher than that than the three megahertz we had. Okay, so this is going to be our known frequency. This ten gigahertz is our known frequency that we are transmitting out of the radar gun. Okay, so we'll multiply that by the speed of light. Okay, three hundred million. And suppose that the energy we, we get reflected back from whatever we're we're trying to use that radar gun on. Suppose that the energy comes back at a frequency, okay, 
and it's not, we don't get it, receive it back at 10 gigahertz. We get it at uh, oh, almost 10 gigahertz, just a little bit under. We get it at 1,000 hertz below 10 gigahertz, all right? So we can go through the math and we can figure out the speed of, of the velocity of, of whatever we just shot with the radar gun. All right, so we multiply this out, uh, or we get this number here, 3.0 times 10 to the 18th. Um, I would prefer to write it this way, but it's just too many zeros. Uh, you know, so, so we get that for the uh, upstairs, and then downstairs we keep this number here, okay? And then, of course, we'll be subtracting that 300 million for the speed of light, okay? And the next step, uh, we get the answer here, or kind of, we get partial, part of the answer, uh, 300 uh, million and 30, okay? That's uh, the division result, all right? Uh, and then we're going to subtract the speed of light from that, and we get 30 meters per second. So whatever we shot that radar gun at, we can deduce with moving at 30 meters per second, which is about equal to 108 kilometers per hour. And this works, uh, same thing, uh, generally a very a simplified way of how, like, radars and aircraft work, uh, and fighter jets and things like, you know, uh, uh, all that, uh, boats, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's more complex things you can do with these, uh, with, with the, uh, like, uh, radars and, uh, uh, that, that the FAA has for air traffic control and the military has and on ships and so on and so forth. But we're not going to get into that. Right, but what I would like to do is get into uh, something that has to do with uh, satellites and, uh, yeah, satellites and, and tracking and all that. All right, so we're back. I flipped the board over. I've reset the camera, so let's continue on. What we're going to look at is uh, a satellite uh, and an antenna on the ground that is tracking the satellite or is trying to communicate with it. And the satellite's moving. All right, so let's let's hop into that. Over here we have an antenna. This is we're just going to look at the side of it. All right, let's just suppose we have an antenna here. We're looking at the side. Uh, this dish is moving you know, up and down, it can point this way, and it can move, it can flop around and point that way, let's just assume, okay? So it's got a range of motion this way. This is called the elevation on an antenna, or satellite dish, okay? This movement here is called the elevation. Now for completeness, completeness assume that we look at this antenna from the top down, uh, we'll see that here, and this thing can rotate, alright? That's called the azimuth. Um, now, we can combine both of these things to find the position of something in space. Uh, you know, if it's this high, you bring the elevation up, well, let's do it at kind of an angle. Bring the elevation up to, let's say, 45 degrees, all right? And then you rotate it uh, right 45 degrees, and you find whatever it is you're looking at. Well, you can get a, an idea uh, of generally where in space the satellite is, or whatever you're trying to communicate with. All right, the spacecraft the, is. Uh, the only problem is you won't be able to have, there's two things that you won't have, or one thing that you won't have with a single antenna, and that is range information. Uh, you can get that, but it'll have to, you have to um, do a round, a round trip time for your communication, okay? Uh, another thing that you won't be able to get uh, in most cases, uh, or I should say some cases, Let's say the satellite or the spacecraft is moving straight away from you. You're not going to be able to get uh, um, position information immediately if it's on that line. Okay. Uh, to get position information, what you can do is, for example, you can, let's say the satellite, here's the ground, this is the Earth. It's, it, it's drawn flat here just because it's easier to draw that way. But what will happen is the satellite will come over the horizon and it'll, it'll, it'll fly over, or well, it'll have a pass, is what, what these, these are called passes. So it'll pass over this station here, this ground station, this antenna, and it'll pass out this way, okay? Now let's assume just for this that the antenna, the satellite is passing directly over the antenna, right? Because we're going to make things easy here. So we're only worried about the angle, that this, this elevation angle here. This is the only angle we're worried about for this example, okay? So, how can we figure out how fast a satellite is moving, okay? We can figure out various positional things and that's, that's fine, but how can we figure out how fast this thing's moving? Well, one way we can do it is what we can, we can do is we can uh, 
communicate with it here, and we'll take the angle of it there, okay, the angle of this, end, this elevation angle, all right? And then at another point in the pass, we'll take the angle again, this elevation angle again, and we'll have changed, all right? And then we just use simple trigonometry, and we'll figure out this distance here, okay? And then we divide that by the time it took to travel that distance, and we'll get the velocity of the satellite, okay? But the problem with that is it takes time, okay? There's a time here that it takes, all right? What happens if we want an immediate result of, or estimation of how fast this satellite is making its pass over the station? Now, the grand, again, this is very simplified, okay? Well, what we could do is we could use the previous stuff, or what we previously went over, and use uh, the Doppler shift to figure this out. Because what's going to happen is this satellite is going to have a known frequency uh, that it is transmitting on. And that's going to be like, for example, a beacon frequency, okay? And that will be what it's transmitting on. This antenna, everybody knows, you know, that frequency is known to everyone. And it's a set frequency. It never changes. Well, it should never change. And if it does, all the users are notified of it. So this guy down here would be notified that, hey, the frequencies change, it's now this frequency, blah, 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 all right? So what we can do is we can use that known frequency and then figure out the frequency change there, okay, to calculate the velocity of this satellite that's moving, going over, all right? So that's what this blue, is this blue? That's what this blue dotted line is here. This is what we're going to calculate, is, is the, the change in the frequency, all right? So, let's assume that the beacon frequency on this satellite is 7.5 gigahertz, okay? Now, I'm, I've moved into, I'm not going to be saying millions and stuff now, unless it actually is millions, because we went over that on the last, the other side of the board. So this is 7.5 gigahertz. That's the frequency that this is transmitting. That is our known frequency, okay? And let's say that, oh, I should have drawn this in blue. But whatever. All right, let's say that the, the, uh, what we receive that known frequency as, to us it, it, it is looking like 7.4998 yada 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 gigahertz. All right? So there's the difference between, between the known frequency and what we're receiving. So we can run through our, our math again up here. Okay? We can run through the math. We'll get 7.5 gigahertz multiplied by uh, the speed of light there. That's uh, what, 300 million. And then we'll divide that by 7.499 gigahertz. Uh, and then we'll subtract 300 million from that. Okay? And we come down here and we see this. Uh, and we get an answer. If we do all that math, we get the answer of 6,928 meters per second or 6.9 kilometers per second. Now, if you're observant, You've noticed that there, there's, there's an issue here because there's, we're not up here. This satellite's not coming straight down towards us on the, the antenna here, all right? It's, it's coming at an angle, all right? It's not, it's not right, right at us. So how do we fix that? Well, for, also, if, if we look at this speed here, we would probably go, wait a minute, this is kind of slow, okay? Depending on what kind of satellite we're using, it may be a little bit slow for us, okay? We want to be right here at 8 kilometers a second, but that's beside the point. Um, that, that's what you go, wait a minute, there's something slow here. All right, but anyway, uh, so if you, if you just looked up here and you said, hey, wait, the satellite's moving this way, it's not coming down here, what you would say, how do we fix that? Oh, that's pretty easy. You just do a little simple trigonometry, and there you go. You, you understand that this, you do a, a cosine of your angle, your antenna angle here, okay? So let's just say that when we, when we made this measurement, our antenna angle is at 30 degrees, all right? Okay? So the angle here, this elevation angle, is 30 degrees, okay? Now, that's an easy way of, to convert that is, well, we go the, the true velocity. This is just the velocity. The true velocity of this, this satellite is the a velocity that we just calculated divided by the cosine of the elevation angle here, okay? And if we do that, we get 8,000 meters a second or 8 uh, kilometers a second. Now, if this holds true, if all of this holds true that we've done what we've done so far, what we should see is when we calculate the velocity, not the true velocity, but 
just the velocity of, of the satellite here, when it's more over us, it will be slower, okay? But then we, when we go back and we use that to calculate uh, the true velocity again, that true velocity should be the same, okay? And that's what I've done over here, all right? So the antenna angle for this portion is steeper, okay? So we're going to use 60 degrees here, all right? So that's the satellite here, so it's about 60 degrees. Um, we're going to assume that, again, if this all is correct, the velocity, again, not the true velocity, but the velocity for this, uh, before we correct it, is going to be slower than it was over here, okay? It was 7 kilometers and, yeah, 6.9 kilometers a second here. It should be less than that over here. Uh, we see that uh, we've got 4,000 meters a second as we calculated here, all right? Uh, it, is, it is less than what we have over here, okay? This was six. Uh, this was about 6.9 kilometers a second. This is 4 kilometers a second. So far, our hypothesis is holding true. Now, when we, when we correct this velocity here for the antenna angle, you know, and, and the uh, fact that it's not, the, the satellite's not coming straight for us, it should be the same as it is here, okay? So let's look at that. The true velocity is the velocity uh, which we just calculated, which was 4,000 uh, meters a second. And where the antenna uh, angle here, the elevation angle is 60 degrees, so that means the satellite is 60 degrees overhead, okay? Now if we uh, do the math there, we'll arrive at 8,000 meters per second, or 8 kilometers per second. That's where, what we're estimating it's moving here. Now, if we come back over here, we do see that we also saw that it was uh, uh, moving at 8 kilometers per second over here. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of other math that, that goes along with this because it's actually more complex than this. You've got the curve of the Earth. You've got all sorts of other things that are happening here. Okay. But it gives you an idea of how you can use um, uh, the Doppler shift to get an instantaneous uh, velocity for a satellite rather than having to wait through a couple of, of moments here, okay? So hopefully uh, that kind of explained uh, Doppler shift to you a little bit, like the physical process of it, because it is a physical process. Um, and an interesting way we can use it uh, that's, you know, not somebody trying to give you a ticket and make you pay for nonsense. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that. I hope you answered any questions you have. Um, and uh, if you got any questions, just leave them and, and ask them in the down below there. And um, thanks for watching.